earlier this morning, we have seen the public reporting indicating that North Korean soldiers are traveling to Russia to fight against Ukraine. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. Soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training. This is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. This is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. Soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training. I think as you have all heard uh, earlier this morning, we have seen the public reporting indicating that North Korean soldiers are traveling to Russia to fight against Ukraine. We're working closely with our allies and partners to gain a full understanding of this situation, but today I'm prepared to share what we know at this stage. We assess that between early to mid-October, North Korea moved at least 3,000 soldiers into eastern Russia. We assess that these soldiers traveled by ship from the Wonsan area in North Korea to Vladivostok, Russia. These soldiers then traveled onward to multiple Russian military training sites in eastern Russia, where they are currently undergoing training. We do not yet know whether these soldiers will en enter into combat alongside the Russian military, but this is a certain, certainly a highly concerning probability. After completing training, these soldiers could travel to Western Russia and then engage in combat against the Ukrainian military. We have briefed the Ukrainian government on our understanding of this situation, and we're certainly consulting closely with other allies, partners, and countries in the region on the implications of such a dramatic move and on how we might respond. I expect to have more to share on all of that in the coming days. For the time being, we will continue to monitor this situation closely. But let's be clear, if North Korean soldiers do enter into combat, this development would demonstrate Russia's growing desperation in its war against Ukraine. Russia is suffering extraordinary casualties on the battlefield every single day, but President Putin appears intent on continuing this war. If Russia is indeed forced to turn to North Korea for manpower, this would be a sign of weakness, not strength, on the part of the Kremlin. It would also demonstrate an unprecedented level of direct military cooperation between Russia and North Korea, with security implications in Europe as well as the Indo-Pacific. As we have said before, Russia's cooperation with the North Korean military is in violation of multiple UN Security Council resolutions, which prohibit the procurement of arms from North Korea and military arms training. This move is likewise a violation. At President Biden's direction, the United States continues to surge security assistance to Ukraine. In just the past week, which I think you've seen, the United States has announced more than $800 million in security assistance to meet Ukraine's urgent battlefield needs. Now, looking ahead, the United States is on track to provide Ukraine with hundreds of additional air defense interceptors, dozens of tactical air defense systems, additional artillery, significant quantities of ammunition, hundreds of armored personnel carriers and infantry fighting vehicles, and thousands of additional armored vehicles, all of which will help keep Ukraine effective on the battlefield.